M0FXB Hamtech, welcome to my channel. Quashing Doc version 0.32, and we're in scan mode. So how did we get to scan mode? Let's go to the beginning. Now the first thing you're gonna to need to do if you've never used the Quashing Doc is download some new firmware for your actual radio, and the link is here. Just add the firmware in the normal way, it's just the normal bin. You've got Exuma and IJV. Uh, okay, and then download the Quashung Doc here, and I've made separate videos in loading that. You just run the zip, open it, and then I created a shortcut uh, which is within the zip. So if you look here, we've got doc, my doc files. There's Quashung Doc there in all these files. Just right click, and all I do is um, show more options, and I select pin to task bar it's already pinned so it's given me the option to unpin that way I can find it easy and so if you look at the bottom here you can see that uh, I've got that option hopefully you can see that in the in the window there uh, possibly not okay you can see it now it's at the bottom there that little tiny looks like the same as these radios that you can see in my video K6 is a tiny version at the bottom. It just makes it a lot quicker for selecting. So how did we even get to this point? Of course, uh, Marcus from Nick Shaw has made several videos about this and I will link the video into the description. But this is me learning, so I'm not really teaching, I'm actually just learning. I have got my new box connected here, made by G1 LRO, okay? Fantastic little box. It just saves me having to, to, if I want to hear the audio and use a microphone, I don't have to start chopping up the cables as per the diagram that you're seeing here. The other option you've got is to use, let's have a look here with all these, one of these devices, which is a twin pin with a USB out. And I, again, contact, just go to this website, g1lro.co.uk, go to his eBay store and buy one. And Mine hasn't arrived yet, so I'm using this box. Yes, the boxes do cost cost more. Unfortunately, they do cost more. Okay, so how do we get to this scanning window? Let's exit. I have to stop it first, I think. With our scanning window. If you lose your scanning window, just look down here. It will show in your taskbar area. I mean, it looks really cool, and I'm going to tell you what it's up to now. So let's just click stop and then close it. Then we're going to exit. This window is actually called XVFO. Now, if you notice, my UVK5 is the width, the screen is black because when you go into what they call XVFO mode, you it's almost like you start again from scratch, is, is how I look at it. You're not just linking to your normal memory channels and VFO and settings, you're actually it's actually a whole new window. So to exit that, select exit, okay? And this is the window that we're normally, we normally see. And if you're curious how to resize, look here on the bottom right. You can, there's some little speckles there. Just look, you can resize like that, look, to so move it around and it'll go up and down. It's pretty good. Yeah, and then of course, it's not gonna connect to anything if you haven't selected your COM port. So you've got COG here, bottom left, you get the connection window. When you're in this window, you can't touch anything else. And down here, look, COM port, and the way we find our COM, once our cable's connected, and with mine, it's that box, we go device manager, and then just go ports, and it's USB 37. So the box I'm using is this one here, and it's called the Universal Radio Controller. It does a lot more than use the the Quashang software a lot more. It, you can do APR. Oh, yes, it's just you basically got an, uh, a USB connection to these Kenwood twin pin radios, and just the, it's just lots you can do. So anyway, so just showing you, you select your com, and at the moment, so I can hear from my PC monitor. I've selected audio out device as my PC monitor, and I ticked this box, um, and then I've got this microphone as IAOC at the moment having fun setting up. I've got the microphone working, but it's intermittent. So there's a problem with Windows where every time you open the software, it decides for you what's gonna happen. Otherwise, color changing, all I've done, you can see it's purple and black. I've just LCD background here, 
the volume for the radio is here look and I've chose black and you can move around where the fonts are and the type of fonts with the this window here uh, I've got my call sign in there and I've just left it analyze a line for now so you've got a few seconds there but anyway it's working fine so how are we going to do the scan thing well the first thing I would do once you're in this window is click the channel editor and I would read your radio so uh, and the software is brilliant just for doing that even if you do nothing else this works well so read here and you'll see it's 99 yeah 100 percent and there's a lot you can do within the channel editor including they've got a section here called repeater but i'm going to make a completely separate video on that and you can save as well look save a file and let's just call it um doc save save that yeah so it's, it's really good but that's not the reason we're doing that but that we do need those channels imported and I'm going to show you why in a minute so close that so here's the normal quashing dock that you can control the radio if, if you just take your time pause and look at the buttons and then look at your radio you'll start to realize it's the same you've got your men menu here and to exit you've got your exit button if you ever want to transmit you have to unlock the TX here We've got VFO here, so hold our finger with our mouse, hold the three down, go to VFO, just make sure I get this right, because I always get confused between Exuma and IJV. So it's allowing me to type frequencies. So one, four, five, this is um, VFO mode or frequency mode. You can see the zeros get getting put in for us. I just hold my finger on VFO, see if that works. Yeah, I think that is working. There's memory. And then VFO. It says F3 when it's VFO, look. And there's memory, we can go up and down. So you've got all the normal functionality of this device. Now, when you go into what is called X VFO, you are it's almost like you're starting again it doesn't you won't delete or lose anything on your radio but it's 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 like you're starting again that's that that's that's how i see it myself so we're going to click x vfo here look x vfo i'll quickly show you the scope i might as well if you click s p e c t spectrum you get a new window and then you can just click one of these Like so, you can move the sliders like that. You can amplify. Very cool. I've noticed if you, when you've got activity, look, you can pinpoint the activity and it gives you the actual frequency. Playing around with that earlier. And then just click. Lost the exit button now. There you are. Click SPCT and you go back to that, then exit, back to normal. And now we're going to click XVFO and you get this window. Now this can be quite confusing because you've suddenly got one, two, three, four on the screen. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, it's, you know, what's, what's not working? If I, and a big knob here on the left, if I swivel it, just get this down a bit smaller. Um, it's changing, but it's not got the frequency. So what I do is, if you want to just type a frequency, of course you can, you just go zero, one, four, five, and it does use the dot, enter. Squelch, on the left here, you've got auto, click that until it says R, that's what I do, and then move your slider up. Okay, now you, of course you can just use auto. You've got split mode here as well, You've got this watch item, which if there's another band active, it will actually go to it, it will switch to it. And you've got WR here. Power, of course, just got power. Many of these functions, like for example, if I tap this, click the screen, I can just start typing the frequency. I go one, if I delete, one, four, five, dot, uh, there you go. Enter, okay? You can type frequencies or you can just 
you know, scroll like I am. I'm just scrolling my mouse up and down, which is cool. And then you've got this knob. If you right click the knob, look, you've got frequency steps. So let's just do 0 0.25 kilohertz and then we can frequency step. Or you can, at the top, see the notifications at the top here in pink. Sorry, with the plus and the minus frequency steps there. What else we got here? That's your auto squelch. VFO. We said the watch power. Oh, mic gain. You can see the figure changing here with a little microphone. Tone, you can turn it on and off. So there's your, you cycle through as you click TX tone. So the common one is uh, 94.8 for say one for, for say GB3WR. Let's put that in 145.600. Enter. So you need to change the step. And squelch it up. There you go. And receive tone as well. There's your settings menu. I see that scrolling through different memories. You can type it on the keypad. We're going to show you the scan in a minute. TX lock and unlock. PTT. And then let just type and enter. So it, 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 the, the radio, you, you won't see the radio doing anything when you're in this mode. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in our memories. Now remember, we've read the radio at the beginning, and that's so important that you do that. When you've read the radio, because this screen will actually be clear, this screen, when you first do this, there'll be nothing here. Right-click, and what I do is I go Import, and I don't click Update, I just click All, and then it just it brings everything in. So now, you know, we've got all our memories there, and of course... I noticed there's a repeater book section there. I'm sure there's a really clever way of importing from repeater book your area. Uh, and, and we're going to do that, but not in this video. So the next thing we'll do is click the scan. I think we've done everything else. There is another VFO here, look, for just VFOing through memories by the looks of it. But we're going to click scan. And we've got this new window. Now, if you ever lose this window, just look down in your taskbar, OK? So scan. Let's create a new one, because I've, I've made one here already, but I'm going to see if I can delete that, actually. There you are, delete. Okay. So we're going to go new, right? And we're going to call it scan, my scan list, okay? My, and just type it on the keyboard, scan list. Click OK. Now, if we when it's highlighted, we want to add to that, don't we? So we're going to go... To, to select things, there's a few ways, but I'm just going to put my finger on control and just tap. I think there is a way of to select in them all, but I'm just, and scrolling and that, but I'm just doing tap, okay, because I'm lazy. Right, there you are, that's enough. And then we're going to go add, so it's put it there, yeah, it's put it all on the right, so everything you've selected goes here. And so if we now hit scan, you get this window. And it's pretty good scanning and when it sees activity, it changes color. Not sure what the blue means. Obviously the lower you have your squelch, it's gonna have an impact. Now there is a monitor section on the scan speed. So let's show you that. So I'm just gonna go stop. Now it's advised to use eight, but I find that too fast. So if you right click here or click it, I'm finding about four works for me because and the higher the number, the faster. So 10 is super fast, but for me, four works. But, you know, different people, different, like different, you know, different things, different settings. So before we go scan, this time we're going to click monitor. And you know when it's selected because it goes red. Then we hit scan. So now the difference now is when it finds something, it will stop. Yeah, like I said earlier, the squelch is important. The squelch setting is going to have an impact on your scanning selections. And it's not finding anything at the moment. Let's see if I can just grab one of my other radios. 
Uh, actually, no, because that's not going to work because it's not. It's only at the moment. It's just scanning my memories. So I'd have to have my memory channel there for me to do that. So we'll do that in a different video. So you see how that works. And we can untick the monitor box. Just think, yeah, it lets us untick it whilst it's scanning. And stop. Close that down. So that's it. I think I thought I'd show you that. This is like showing you the sort of scan, the way to scan. Uh, and to go to come out of that, just press exit, and you're back in the normal window. Remember how to make it bigger and smaller. So good luck with it. And the next video I'm going to show you is is the CW function that's now been added. Thanks for watching my YouTube channel and. This universal controller box that I use, uh, about £50, and that's the contact area there. Or you might go for the budget one, like I said earlier. And thanks so much to Marcus, Nick Shaw, Quashang Dot. All the links are in the description. Lots of videos showing you how to install this. 7.3, all the best.